Action. Excellent. All right, guys. Um, so, does anybody have any questions about any of that? All to the side. All those things. All the clock. Just practice. <laughs> just practice. <laughs> no. um, so, we have to account for a very <laughs> sort of broad variable, right? Which is that when you try to beat people, they try to stop you. <laughs> people are gonna do stuff. Okay. So what's worth asking is kind of like what is the path that most likely they will try to escape out of? Now, if, Lila, can I grab you? Can you put me in the choke? And can you put me on that side? That arm grabbing my neck? Unless you go to the other side? Yeah, I do. All right. Now you're fine. So she's here. She's got the choke. The knee comes in. But we go on. Where is she? Now, uh, let's go to the and I just want you to hold the position, okay? So she's good. And let's say that right over my back. Now, the thing to understand, is that, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, so far. Okay. The thing to understand about this is, um, actually, let's get my head out of here for a second. I want just imagine my head's in the choke right now, so that way you guys can hear me a little better, right? The thing to understand about this is, if you look at this position, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to go to the left, right? In the sense of, let's take my head in the choke, I'm trying to... Because their leg's blocking me. So what's the direction I would want to go? The right. To the right. right. Why? Well, open tight. Exactly. Open tight. There's a big opening there, right? So grab my head this time. She's got me. And it sort of makes sense. We're going to try to clear this leg. Now, once she gets everything wedged in really tight, this knee up high, that leg over my back, um, it's probably going to be pretty difficult for me to accomplish that. I'm going to try to accomplish that and do not let me. Okay? So we go. She's got the choke. Right, clamp that. Yep, exactly. Right, you see what I'm saying? And then you figure on a long enough timeline, it's more likely that she's going to finish me before I can find the path there. But where that tends to be a problem isn't so much once she's secured it, but rather, let's say we start from the feet. Okay, so I shot in on the takedown. She catches the choke. She pulls into the guard. And I go immediately trying to get the path, right? So does that make sense, guys? Like that variable? That in the instant that, in the moment that they drove him forward and you secured the guard, before that top leg clamps down tight enough to prevent them from moving laterally, they start to get past that leg. The thing about this, though, is um, this actually is sort of helpful because this is going to lead us to what I think is, in my, my personal opinion, the strongest finishing position that you can acquire from this arm and guillotine situation, especially from the guard. So um, I'll actually circle you out and grab Chase for this. So I grabbed Chase in this choke, and then, like I said, as before I secured it, he starts going away, right? So I want you to stay up on your toes, because remember, I'd be chasing here, you're trying to circle, I'm, ch I'm just chasing, right? Okay, what I'm gonna work for is this leg to puncture inside. Can you guys see that? So I was up here. This drops in. I catch here. I just, I mean, literally, guys, so let's say really slow, you're going to the right, right? I just have to get my foot to clear. Like, keep working to the right. Look how far he can get. As long as my foot gets him, I have this, okay? From here, we'll keep it out there. From here, what I'm going to do is pummel this leg through and gobble up a figure four. And then I'm going to finish my choke. Now, the beauty part about this half guard choke is, I need you to just an open guard once again. So the thing about this open guard position is that, okay, I'm here, and here, and here. Well, there is sort of a finite amount of crunch that I can do. So if it's not secured tightly enough, if my hand's not quite in the right position, there is sort of a point where uh, I might not be able to secure it, like finish this, right? But here's the thing. Okay, he gets up on his toes. He starts trying to pass. I gobble. I collect. There's like no limitation for how much I can crunch. I can literally just keep contorting. Okay, down there? Yeah. I can just keep contorting like underneath of him. So what it kind of looks like is I'm here. And I'm just here with this choke. You know, Chase, I just kind of kept rotating underneath yeah, him. Yeah, right. right. So this is, the, this is the deal. I go to my side. I have this army guillotine. There is sort of a finite amount of crunch I can do while my legs are up high. Once they drop low, 
keep rotating my shoulders towards my knees and that elbow towards the ceiling so one other aspect of this let me get you here and your head on this side is if you're so inclined and this is actually what I like to do I get it I'm here if it doesn't finish right away I'm here I drop I pull I pummel and I finish same exact finishing mechanism I'm just kind of using the transition to the half guard to create a little bit more space well really actually it's a significant more space to be honest that bubble goes from like here to like here so invisible opponent if I'm going to force if I'm going to facilitate the transition outside foot catches the ankle inside foot gets as low to the ground doesn't have to necessarily go on the inside yet and I'm going to pull his ankle until I can slide under wrap in figure four and coil for that finish so there's two main contexts one is they get up on their toes and they start circling toward the choke side in which case thank you give me that give me that half guard yo like I want it give me it do it do it do it um or if I if I'm so inclined uh, I'll transition to the half guard choosingly I just grab the outside ankle and I transition in there um, this is actually, if you watch Nate Diaz, this is his fin guillotine finishing sequence. Is he'll bully the guy backward, right? They drive in, or he'll catch on the drive, and he immediately goes to the open guard, and when they start trying to pass, he gobbles the half guard, and then he's got him. Especially with a guy like Nate Diaz, such long, he's got such a long torso. You figure out how much can, torque can he create by doing that crunch? Do you want to see that? No, I got it. Excellent. Well, I'll do it to you one more time then. So again, option one. Grab your head. So option one is I went for it and he starts running away. So I just have to get this leg. Do you guys see that motion there right there? Like, let me do that one more time because I really want to emphasize like how much range of motion I have to catch him. We'll go with this way so the feet can space in the group. I'm going. He gets up on his toes. Guys, I literally just have to get this. Get free, please. Is it's like, right? Like, boom. I got him. Like, I just have to catch his leg with my ankle. You guys see, all I had was my heel. I can use the heel to feed to the other leg. I can use the other leg to feed back to the first leg, so on and so forth. Likewise. So that's if they start hopping around trying to get free. Or, let's say I got in and it didn't quite secure. Step here. The thing is, like, get free, please. Pass my guard. Thank you. Here's my finish. Make sense, guys? Delightful. Let's part up what we got. One, two, three. Eight. 